day two of our social distancing uh, live broadcast here from Blue Sky Farm. Uh, Kim and I are, I'm going to attempt to do it now just directly with the, uh, uh, you know, cell <laughs> connection. Yesterday I used the Wi-Fi and um, it was a little too far from the house, so it was a little jumbly. We'll see how it works out today. Try to get it better and better every day. And uh, what we're going to do today is uh, do a tour of the greenhouse to kind of inspire everybody to uh, get going planting their gardens this year so that you're outside. Again, you don't have to have a, a kit. As a matter of fact, I don't recommend having a greenhouse kit. What I recommend doing is just getting some plastic anywhere, some old clear plastic, and uh, just setting it up around a structure that you can uh, make out of any old wood. Uh, it is nice to walk into it and make it a little bit easier. And uh, also use plastic to cover that ground, especially if you live in a colder climate that it's not past uh, frosty time yet. It's good to heat up that soil um, and uh, get those plants going sooner. So those are two ways to do it. And also, of course, in your house, you can uh, just start plants in there and then transplant it outdoors when it's ready. Just look up on the internet where it is to um, uh, where your fr last frost dates are and when the recommended times and the soil temperatures are best to start various different kinds of plants. And so we're going to just head right on in the greenhouse and then we're going to move over to the compost. I'm going to show you how we do our compost uh, and then we're also going to look at our overwintered garden and see what's left from last year. And so uh, here we go into the greenhouse. Kimmer, what do you have going? I know you planted a lot today, so I'm a little bit behind. Um, let's start over here with what you're working on. Yeah, so this is a winter squash from a company that I really like. It's called Uprising Seeds. And so it's a Patimaran winter squash. And then I've just done my zucchinis as well. Um, and so I'm just planting those in some nice potting soil. And our last frost date should be between the 20th and the 30th of April and these are supposed to be planted in your greenhouse about four weeks prior to that so or of course you can direct seed them at that yes. time it's yes. just that you'll they'll produce a little bit later and they're winter's keepers right mm -hmm. so this is really designed for next, next winter fall. so winter. Yep. it's really important to do a mix of what you want to have for food security this summer but also for next winter um, and so you want to have some winter squash, and I'm, I think back here Kim put in summer squash, aka zucchini. And uh, way back in the corner over there is microgreens at the bottom, and so I assume that's just various kinds of lettuces. And uh, Kim didn't put herbs any root. Oh, and you have herbs on the top. What kind of herbs are you talking about over there? Uh, we have oregano and thyme and rosemary and. Do we have any of that overwintering mm -hmm. from last year as well? We do. So this is kind of our just a little extra for this right. year. So we still have some time, and we still have um, something else. Yeah, <laughs> we have a lot of stuff oh, in our yeah. herb garden, so we'll see. But we always like to do a little bit more each year, just to make sure that if anything uh, dies or something during the summer, we have a backup. Um, oh, what do you have there? Oh, well, this is the Bindu so Organized Seed Packet. <laughs> I've tried a ton of different ways. I tried a cooking recipe box, just random boxes and drawers, but I found this to be the best. You can just get a regular three-ring binder, and then you get these pages that are actually for photographs, and you can put your seed packets in them, and I just label them by plant family. So I've got my Solanaceae here, which are my pota or tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, and such, and then the Curcubitaceae, Curcubits, are the squashes and zucchinis. Mm -hmm. I really recommend, um, you know, nobody really wants to spend any money right now, of course, but um, so you don't have to organize it like this, uh, but I do recommend um, if you can get a hold of a copy in the library, uh, you know, if, I think you can, the libraries are letting you check out books and I don't know how, drive up, I believe. And so uh, Botany in a Day is just an amazing book, both for wild plants and also uh, basically learning the plant families. Um, and uh, by the way, tomorrow, if I haven't mentioned, we're going to go out into the woods and harvest stinging nettles. Uh, another batch <laughs> and so that's what we have planned for tomorrow but um, 
it's really nice to while you're doing your gardening to really understand the plant families their edible uses the medicinal uses and the utilitarian uses and thomas elpel who wrote botany of the day just did a brilliant job with that so if you can get a copy it, it would be really helpful um, while you're you know spending a lot of time at home uh, take a look at that uh, in the evenings to kind of catch up and understand a little bit more about your plants by the way you don't uh, you also for some of the more expensive seeds like for instance you can't just start from ski seed potatoes sweet potatoes um, you can start onions I think this may have been was this purchased at the store or started no, by seed we last grew year, that we grew last that last year. year. well you notice exciting. if you don't some, you can catch them and you can use eat the greens of course that's green onions uh, you can also eat the bulb, uh, which is the classic, you know, for f cooking. Uh, and then, but if you don't eat them soon enough, they grow roots, the true roots, down here below the bulb. And uh, you can just plant that right in the ground. Matter of fact, what we will do before we plant this in the ground is just chop this off, use the green onions, and then that'll grow into uh, uh, some more green onions <laughs> this year. Well, there's all sorts of other mix of herbs, and uh, uh, and then when this all starts coming up and starts popping through, uh, we'll revisit the greenhouse and uh, take a look at everything and see how it grows. I think we're going to go over to compost right now because it's really important uh, during this time. If you don't already um, compost, um, you know, there has been, we have, I think, a local uh, waste management company but um, they are saying that sometimes there may be some disruptions in services, especially if they can't get people working uh, or whatever the case may be. And so you don't want to have compost, aka food waste, sitting around in your garbage. Just start right now separating out your food waste from your garbage. Um, plus, then you won't have as much to pay for when for garbage pickup. And start taking your compost. And I've been saving um, our compost for the last couple of weeks uh, there'd be a lot uh, in case we do something like this by the way here's the guitar i'm going to end up with a song um just thought of something i'd like to share with everybody back here is one of our compost systems uh, because we do a lot we have a ton of summer camp um, leftover food waste of course and so we've got a system where we put in the uh, new stuff into an old cast iron tub that was out here and <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a, uh, you use whatever you can, but a cast iron tub's great because we have to be really careful not to attract rats. Um, you know, there's all sorts of things, things lying around, whatever, that will uh, create rat habitat. And right now, the um, rats aren't too bad, kind of on a lull in their cycle because weasels came through a couple of years ago and just wiped them all out. Um, but uh, you still have to watch out not that you're not creating more rat habitat. And so what we do here is find something that they cannot chew through. Um, they will, when it gets bad, when they start getting overpopulated, they'll chew right through this hard plastic. And so we put in here uh, steel wool to kind of make sure that in the drainage spots that the rats don't chew in around there. We have we also catch the drippings down there. That's called compost um, tea, and that's really rich. And so that has to be emptied a lot because you don't want it to um, get super putrid, and also you don't want little mice to jump in there and die uh, because they can't get out. And so we have to dump that regularly. Let's see if we can see. I'm going to open up this compost. I haven't been in here since. We've been self-isolating since we got back from working along the border down in Texas, and so I don't think we've opened this up since then. Um, what we're going to do after this is ready, we're going to um, put the compost that's been twirling. Here, by the way, I'm going to twirl while I'm talking. Been twirling in this composter, aerating for probably well since last fall, and um, this is pretty full. And so this should be ready for going straight into the garden back here. This garden back here, we've kind of neglected over the winter. You can see that the uh, wind has, we didn't really cover it very well, and the wind blew uh, some of the cardboard that we had on there to keep the weeds down off. And the buttercups, because this is a wetlands, um, that 
this old house was, this old farmhouse was developed in. Those buttercups really came in. We finally got rid of the reed canary grass. Now it's just buttercups we have to get out of there. So it's going to take a full day of work to weed out the buttercups. Anyway, so this gets twirled every, it's best to do it every day. Um, and so after this in here has um, done kind of a basic job of breaking down, we're gonna put it in there that in the garden and after probably by early summer might be able to use this compost we'll see so I use an old shovel this is, happens to be a clam digging shovel and so you got to turn this stuff too and let's take a look and see if we have any red worms uh, in here I have a hard time keeping the red worms going this compost should be a mix of about 70% of your food uh, waste and about 30%, you can look up on the internet and kind of there's different recipes for about the balance, about 30% of uh, brown material. And so what I do is like all the old cardboard, of course, <laughs> in our uh, extreme affluence that we've all, many of us have been living in, or at least pretending that we've been living in or buying stuff from Amazon, there's so much cardboard. Uh, anything that's not printed on, you can just use as brown waste and you want to uh, strip it up real small and put it in there but I'm going to first mix this up as best I can take a look and see how it's looking this is going to be again and take a while before it is ready but oh there's some red worms we ordered some red worms <laughs> this is going to be a nice shot for everybody uh, that's a regular worm but there's some red worms in there as well um, and I think they got shipped from Florida or somewhere, the red worms. But, um, so you, but you don't need to ship them. You can just borrow some from a friend that has compost going. Because you really want to get red worms going in here. It's just, you know, a kind of worm that really works well with compost. Getting it down to basically breaking it down to soil. So we've got, I'm going to move. Um, what I like to do is... Every time I come in here, I kind of keep track of what area I dug in and put the new stuff in so that I'm kind of rotating it around. I've got a whole bunch of uh, compost to put in here now. So I'll put that compost in. I'll put in, strip up a bunch of cardboard to put in for brown. And I'll also, uh, we're really lucky in this area to, well, we're not that lucky, but most of the farmland has been covered by warehouses out of which you order and buy all of your goods throughout the United States. This entire valley between here and Seattle is covered with warehouses, Amazon warehouses, and before Amazon, a lot of other kind of warehouses. One of them being, do you drink coffee? Because uh, Starbucks um, contracts with uh, wholesalers like Green Mountain Coffee Roasters, and they have, and Delano's Coffee, these huge warehouses that have leftover coffee traps and this is amazing um, for all sorts of applications, including um, extra brown waste in here. I usually put it just on the top to kind of keep the smell down. Uh, you don't want it to be stinking up your neighbors. I'm not really happy about that, if that's the case. So I'll finish this later, after we're offline. And uh, next I just want to go in and look at our garden. It's looking pretty uh, intimidating. There's a lot of work to do. <laughs> Uh, we have this fence up around here because uh, once we really got our orchard going, which will be another day, we'll tour the orchard out front of the house. Um, the deer can't started coming in, of course, and so we want to keep the deer. This is sort of a, it's not a rabbit-proof fence, but it does have uh, it's the kind of fence that was purchased in um, at Wilco, and uh, down at the bottom it's. A much smaller um, squares and at the top bigger squares and of course you're not probably want to spend money on fencing right now uh, so you want to do alternative deer blockages like just have string going up around your um, garden and then hang some flagging or something that kind of uh, toilet paper although that's a hot commodity right now uh, so that the deer are kind of scared off from going into your garden as much as possible. There's all sorts of tricks. You can look up on the internet and see what works for you. So I'm just going to um, <clears throat> take a look. at Here's the leftover kale from last year. You just keep it growing. And of course, kale is a mustard. And so all we use it for is cooking. 
or you know throw it in a stir fry and things like that and uh, if any there are any wolf camp staff watching right now they're going to be just uh, gagging because they hate most of them hate kale uh, because I used it too much in back in the old days of cooking for wolf camp and then we've got celery down here and you can just use celery greens they taste virtually the same as the celery stock and so uh, we're going to have to really weed that and make sure that there's no buttercup in there because buttercup is poisonous. And so you don't want to accidentally <laughs> harvest any buttercup when you're trying to harvest your celery or anything else. Over here we have leftover leeks from last year. I'm going to dig one up and see how edible they're looking right now. Oh, we have a nice shot of the hot dog van in the back. Uh, <laughs> the classic hot dog ketchup and mustard van from Wolf Camp. All right, I'm going to... This really needs to be heated. The leeks can go really deep, of course, and they've overwintered, so they're really, really down there. But, yeah, looking pretty good. Um, this would be great for cooking. You might want to just keep it for tonight. I'm not sure what we're making, but uh, that would be really scrumptious right in there, probably. Yep. Some of it's not looking too good, of course, because it's overwintered, but you just discard. You know, if you're at the grocery store, uh, it's not time to be picky right now. You take whatever uh, we can get, especially if things the so supplies chain starts to... Leak kale celery saute. Leak kale <laughs> celery saute. Okay, I'm going to give that to you. <laughs> All right, well, anyways, tomorrow, join us. We're going to go out into the woods and harvest stinging nettles, and Kim has this amazing new way of harvesting that's just really low labor and um, is, uh, is also... Uh, yeah, just a quick way of harvesting stinging nettles, and you'll uh, we'll talk about the applications using it, what we use it for, and let's see what the uh, it's looking like here. I'm going to um, sing us a song because I want to end every one of these when I'm feeling it. This is only literally the second time I think I've sang since the end of last summer camp. So um, the first few uh, I, I listened to my uh, singing yesterday. I really uh, didn't do Mike Love justice, but that's okay because nobody can. And so, you just got to go to MikeLoveMusic.com or to uh, whatever your streaming service is and download Mike Love Music to really keep you going during this time. This is another song I, I'm going to just kind of showcase all my favorite singers um, one by one probably this song is by Buffy St. Marie and uh, it became popular because Joe uh, Cocker uh, made it a popular pop song in the 80s but uh, you should really go and onto YouTube and listen to Buffy St. Marie singing it she especially the uh, Native American singers in the background drumming and singing it just makes it absolutely haunting it's beautiful so go check that out it's very inspirational one of those that I would recommend having on your loop uh, during this time when music is going to be critical and being outdoors is absolutely critical both to stay healthy so that you know you're not around a concentration of viruses but also if you do get sick with a cold or something else uh, getting that fresh air is really important uh, for a short time if it's cold and, you know, and or you know wet or whatever out uh, or for a, a long time if it's nice and warm on your lungs so you want to keep those lungs warm all right buffy st marie here's <laughs> an attempt oh these great songs sometimes are very complex with some hard chords and so i should have i did practice it once in the house here we go who knows what tomorrow brings in a world few hearts survive all I know is the way I feel when it's real keep it So
Some hang on to what used to be. Live their lives looking behind. All we have is here and now. All our life out there. Change is key, and that's you just gotta listen to Buffy St. Marie Bird. <laughs> <laughs> she did she nails the key change. All right, well, we'll see you tomorrow out in the woods harvesting stinging nettles. Uh, we're gonna shoot for 6 p.m., but we'll start it a little bit sooner because I think there's a bit of a delay in the broadcast. Um, that's our attempt. Anyways. And it gets dark in the woods. Plus, it gets dark in the woods. Yep. Hmm, maybe we'll start at 5:30. Okay, take care, everybody. Be well. <laughs>